In this lecture, uh, we continue k-means by providing a pictorial example and also uh, a numerical example. This is going to help uh, understanding the k-means algorithm much better. So the goals are uh, seeing some examples, as I mentioned. Before going to that, let me uh, just briefly summarize the k-means algorithm one more time. The goal of k-means is to cluster a given data set into k groups or clusters. In order to do that, we start with generating k random centroids. We call them C sub one, C sub two to C sub K. Each of these correspond to a group, a group of our data points. Then we find the distance from all of our data points to each of the centroids. If the distance from a given data point to one of these is minimum, then that data point, let's call it xi, is classified in that specific group. So the closest data points go to the closest group. After this iteration, we update the centroids. How do we do that? The new centroid, let's call centroid one, updated version, is the average of all of the points that belong to that specific group. So now that we have this updated centroid, again, we find the shortest distance of all of our original data points to the centroid. That helps us to regroup, to update our classification and achieve and move towards a better uh, cluster. We do these steps iteratively until the point where all of the centroids don't update anymore. So if we go one more iterations, the centroids value are the same. Or after two consecutive iterations, we have the same cluster. So if we, let's call this iteration i, iteration i plus one. If in iteration i, we have x1, x2 in this cluster, x3, x4, x5 in this cluster. And again, in iteration i plus one, we have x sub one, x sub two, let's call this s1, s sub two. x sub three, x sub four, x sub five. s sub two, s sub one. What does this mean? This means that the centroids here, c sub one, c sub two, c sub one, updated, C sub two, updated. That means C sub one, the centroid for first iteration is equal to the centroid in second iteration. And the same for centroid for the second group. And this is nothing but achieving uh, our goal for clustering. So at this point, we stop and we consider this our uh, clustering. So these data points belong to cluster one, these three data points belong to cluster two or the second group. All right. Let's see how we can show this visually. We start with the set of data points in a uh, two-dimensional real space. So each of these points represent one of our data points. Xi, Y sub I x sub j, y sub j. And we want to do a three means, which means we have to define three centroids, c sub one, c sub two, and c sub three. Let's choose three random points in this space. So we have point one, two, and three. These are our random regenerated centroids. After one iterations, the centroids are moving toward a better classifier. So as you can see, this is one. So it moved a little bit towards this group of data. This is two, and this is, this is three, and this is two. So two and three are getting more distance. 
Let's see what will happen in the next iteration. In the next iteration, again, one, two, three. They're getting more solid. Our, our centroids are getting more differentiable. So as you can see, when we, we run the algorithm more and more, we get a better classifier. Now we have one classification around here, one around here, and one around here. These are the clusters that we identify. Let's see what will happen in the next iteration. In the, ultimately, after running the algorithm several times, what will happen? We will have three distinct clusters. What does that mean? The centroids are updated over time by running the algorithm more and more, which means we have a better classifier. And finally, we have what you can see. So if we run the algorithm one more time, we are going to see exactly the same classification. All right. Now let's take a look at our example. Our example is we are given these data points. These are pairs of X and Y in two dimensional real space. Four and five, seven and six, 10 and nine, pair one and two, pair eight and three, and pair two and one. So, and we want to do a two group classification. So we want to classify this data into two clusters. We start with two centroids. Centroid one, these are random values. You can start with any other random value and see how you converge. So C sub one is one and two, and C sub two or the second centroid is five and six. So uh, this table helps us to find the distance from each of these data points to each of the centroids. So this is centroid one, this is centroid two. Let's call this data point one, data point one, data point two, data point three, four, five, and six. So this is data point sub one, D sub two, D sub three, D sub four, D sub five, and D sub six. Now what we want to do, we want to find the distance between each of these data points and each of these centroids. How do we find distance? Distance is the square root of x sub one minus x sub two a square plus y sub one minus y sub two a square. Let me do that for one of them. For example, the distance from d sub one to c sub one. It's going to be square root of four minus one square plus five minus two square, which is a square root of three to power two plus three to power two, which is a square root of 18. It's approximately 4.2. We do this for all of these data points and find their distance to each of these centroids. Now, uh, in order to define the cluster, so this is cluster one, this is cluster two. So the shortest value at each of these rows represent which uh, cluster our data set belongs to. So the distance from point D sub one is closer to C sub two, which means it belongs to cluster two. For D sub two here, the distance again to cluster two is closer. So it goes to cluster two. For D sub three, again, the value of 5.8 is less. So it goes to cluster two. For D sub four, it's the other way around. The value, it's closer to cluster one. So it's cluster one. For D sub five, it's closer to the centroid for the second cluster. So it goes to cluster two. And for D sub six, we have this one uh, to centroid one is closer. So it's going to be cluster one. All right. Now that we have all this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract the ones that belong to cluster two and find the average for the new centroid. I'm going to do the same for the first one. 
So now at this step, we have to find the average. What's the average? The average X. So we want to find centroid two. The average X is going to be four plus seven plus 10 plus eight divided by four. And the average Y is going to be five, six, nine, five, six, nine, and three. Five, six, nine, and three divided by four. And we do the same thing. I try to do it with blue color for uh, centroid one. Centroid one, X bar is going to be one plus two, one plus two divided by two. And Y bar is going to be two plus one, two plus one divided by two. So by doing this, we find the new centroid. Now, this is the iterative process that we talked about before. At this stage, what we are going to do, we are going to use this new centroid. So this is centroid one updated. And this is centroid two, again, updated. All right, now we have the centroids for our clusters. We are going to repeat the same table, the same process again, and find all of the distances from our data points to the center. All right. So we have data points here. They are the original data points. And we have these new centroids. This is very important. Updated centroids. The updated centroids here. Now we are going to find the distances again. So here, distance to two is less, so this is cluster two. Distance to two is less, cluster two, cluster two. Distance to one is less, cluster one. Distance to two is less, cluster two. And distance to one is less, cluster one. So as you can see here, the clusters didn't change. So these four points belong to cluster two as they did before. And these two also belong to cluster one as they did before. So we have found the centroid that cluster our data in two groups. All right, uh, how, to use, how to implement chain means using Python? There is a video here that if you're interested in using uh, K-means for your research or for future courses, you can watch that video. But the purpose of this lecture was to show you how linear structures can be useful in K-means. All right, in this lecture, we talked about a pictorial example of K-means. So if you remember, we said that we choose some random centroids and then over iterations, these random centroids evolve to cluster our data into distinct groups. And then we provided a numerical example for k-means algorithm. 